Hey everybody, welcome to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter. I think there was a little something happening with the timer there for today's stream, but it is Monday. That's probably what was going on. I didn't realize that daylight savings had happened and that Monday was, was ready to get started for the week, but I'm excited to be here. Got a lot of people jumping in the chat. Tim's in the chat. Alberto, Richard, Rosie, Marissa. Ryan is from Detroit. He's representing his city inside the chat. If you're not in the chat, maybe you're watching this on YouTube, jump over to Behance, watch it at uh, behance.net slash live. You can sign in and uh, start chatting with us. This is the XD Daily Creative Challenge. We're gonna be doing some fun XD stuff here. So uh, it's gonna be pretty fun today. Um, I woke up this morning and I made the absolute best vanilla almond latte and it was so great. What were you drinking this morning? Coffee, tea, what do you prefer on the Monday? Let me know down in the chat. All right, uh, we are gonna get started here. Uh, we're doing something pretty interesting. Uh, last week we did a UI crash course. We talked about things like typography and we talked about color and we talked about vertical rhythm and we talked about all sorts of fun stuff. And this week we're gonna be doing a UX crash course. We're gonna be talking about things like learnability and consistency and all sorts of other fun UX type things. And we're gonna be using Adobe XD to do that fun stuff. So um, let's see, Tim says vanilla, almond, and latte. You're crazy, man. Um, not crazy, just like me some good coffee. We got normal coffee, we got vanilla chais. Uh, coffee is a must, I absolutely agree uh, with Quinn. Um, a huge thing of water and milk in the morning. Water and milk, I mean, I'm not against it. Hey, you do you. I'll do, oh, not combined though. Okay, so separate water and then some milk. That's pretty good. Hey, let's jump over to my screen, talk a little bit briefly about what the XD Daily Creative Challenge is. If you don't know, we'll talk about it in 45 seconds here. The Daily Creative Challenge is a way for you to sharpen your UI and UX skills in just nine challenges. And we are starting today on challenge number five. Each day you're gonna receive that challenge. And if you just scroll down here at behance.net slash challenge slash XD, we're gonna scroll down. You can see all the challenges that have unlocked. They unlock each and every morning. John Michael says, French press for the win. I like your style. Uh, down here is today's challenge. We're gonna be talking about component states and we're gonna be designing a chat experience for mobile users. Uh, and we're gonna establish some familiar design patterns. So we're gonna be talking about a UX principle called consistency and how important it is in <laughs> bourbon and bad decisions. That, that is, you're running over from the weekend, so watch out for that. You can get my starting file right here by pressing get started, and that's part one. Number two, you can join the community chat, not just the live chat that you're in right now, but you can jump over and join the Adobe XD Discord that has over 35,000 creatives inside of it. You can watch the daily show. That's what you're watching right now. It's pretty easy. And then lastly, after you're done, you can share your work on Behance using the hashtag, hashtag XD daily challenge. That way we can find it over on Behance. Speaking of Behance, let's look at some of, oop, I just hit my microphone. Let's look at some of last week's amazing work, shall we? Um, we have a submission from Danning Lu. And last week we were focusing on Friday on shapes, just using simple shapes and using some masking techniques inside of XD. Um, and we, we're bringing all the things together, right? Color and shapes and typography. And this is a great example of that. You got fun shapes, fun images masked inside of those organic shapes. It's kind of a fun exploration of shape there. The color is rocking. I love this. I actually, I love this more than the version that I did because this looks like it has almost like a three-dimensional painting kind of thing happening behind it. Love this. This is super good stuff. Let's go to the next one. This is a submission by uh, Dorji Lama, and uh, this is their day four submission. Again, just using simple shapes. Here's a, can we just talk about something so simple and so beautiful? Let's just zoom in. This little leaf that's just poking over, it breaks the plane, it breaks the rules, right? It says, hey, most shapes are contained, not this little guy. This little guy's peeking over. I think that's nice, and it brings all the colors and everything together. All right. Uh, we had another one inside of our Discord channel I wanted to look at by um, by our uh, our friend Nung Dung. I, I murdered that name probably, but it's Monday and I haven't had enough of that delicious coffee. But here's a really fun exploration of shapes. Mixing in just some floating actual like photographic elements with the shapes, bringing the whole composition together. Ah, oh, really like this. This, not a, this is Kids Club, but it, there's just such a good vibe 
that's coming off of this. I'm really digging it quite a bit. So with that said, let's uh, let's kick over to our XD file today if you downloaded it and let's get started. Here's what your XD file might look like. I might have a few extra elements like some color palettes and typography, but uh, I don't put those in the starting file because I want you to pick your own color palette. I want you to do you, explore, use what we do here a little bit like some guidelines, all right? So we got a lot of people in the chat. Richard Otley's in the chat. Uh, Glitter Dust Studio on, on it with us. Um, Anna's in the chat. Ryan's still here with us. In our starting file, day five, uh, a little bit about the challenge, that chat experience for mobile. Uh, we're gonna focus on creating an experience that's consistent and therefore allows the user to focus on their goals and so they don't have to learn the UI, right? We want the user to learn it as quickly and easily as possible. This is a big UX kind of principle. We have an inspiration down here and a bunch of resources and links that you can go check out if you need to. I think down below here is also the, uh, the link to get into our Discord server, the Adobe XD Discord server. So let's jump over, let's start designing. I'm just gonna grab all of this stuff. Why don't we just move our artboard over to this side? That way we see nothing but our artboard on the canvas. Let's talk really, really quickly about consistency. I wanna lay out some UX principles really quickly and we're gonna dive right in and actually do some designing. Uh, consistency is important. Like we said, it's gonna make it very learnable, very memorable, very easy, a good experience for our user. There's some different types of consistency that we're gonna be talking about today. One of them is visual consistency, okay? That means I have a color palette over here and let's say later on down the road, I go ahead and make a button out of it and this button all of a sudden gets established as my main call to action. Users should be looking for this color, this button, when they wanna click on something. Well, if later on down the road on a new screen, if all of a sudden I start visually mixing things up, I make this a different color, maybe like an orange or something like that, or a red, and my buttons are no longer rounded, but they're square. Oh, we have some consistency with our typography and all of our information, but is this what the user's been trained to click on? Is this where their eyes should go? And this really starts to make sense when you do something like this. What happens when, we're talking about visual consistency right now, if you're just jumping in with us, what happens if this is the case, that everywhere the user goes, they're experiencing things like this. Things might change on the page, no problem, but is there still some sort of visual consistency? There is, right? The user can learn, hey, no matter where that blue button is, that's the thing I'm supposed to click on, therefore visual consistency would help quite a bit versus confusing our users like this. This is just some UX kind of bare bones principles we're talking about right now. Let's go to the next form of consistency. We wanna talk about functional consistency, okay? Uh, this can be prototyping, it could be animations, it could be how things tend to operate. So when I click this, let's just set this up really quick for our example. Let's say when I click this, um, this, button, there is a menu hiding off screen, just a little bit like that. Okay, I'm gonna take the opacity down. We're just using XD to its to its to the simple parts of its functionality, right? And when I click this button, my, my, uh, my menu is gonna come up, lock into place right there. We're gonna turn it up. Let's say it is the blue color, okay? And let's stretch it out, something like that, okay? Now we're gonna prototype. Let's do a quick prototyping here. We're gonna click on our button, head over here. Let's tap, let's auto animate. And we click it again, we'll go back, okay? Now we can press play and see our prototype happening. Every time I click a button, what we're thinking is we're getting this, ooh, something like that. Anyways, we, we can work it out, make it look a lot better. But, but every time we click a button, we're thinking this is a constant functional piece of consistency. By clicking buttons, I'm raising and lowering menus. It, is that the type of consistency we wanna to offer to our user? If we train them that this type of functionality is available and this is what they should be looking for, man, if we, the more we do it, the more consistent we can be with it, later on we can introduce all sorts of fun and interesting things to our users without having to reteach them an interface. Think of climbing in the cockpit of an airplane and constantly having to reteach somebody how dials and gauges and all the stuff, I don't know what's inside of a cockpit of an airplane, but remember, think of having to reteach a pilot every time. They come in and here's how things work and then this different plane, 
well, now the altimeter and all the other things look completely different. Ah, we want to keep things consistent for our user, all right? Then we want to talk about internal and external consistency. Internal is really easy. It's the mixture of visual and functional consistency together that's bringing this idea of total consistency. What's external consistency? External consistency is if all of a sudden we are doing the corporate website for this application, we're going to use similar elements. We're going to make sure that things make sense. Obviously, let's do like we could do center aligned here. And even though there'll be some differences, right? No problem, there's going to be some differences. Let's say this is our, our headline or our hero here. Let's just line things up. There's still some consistency with our application and it brings the whole thing together. So external and internal consistency. With that being said, let's jump over and let's start designing a little something something. Let's start designing some, consist some consistent things here, okay? First things first, let's design, um, let's design a, maybe like a landing screen for our chat application, okay? I'm gonna bring my, this, ooh, what do we do here? Fill and bring our opacity up. Let's bring this thing up. I'm gonna hold down option and I'm just gonna drag the corners out so that the corners of my card are kind of like all the way down to the edge, right? There's not, they're not rounded like my top ones are. Uh, let's get rid of this button for now. I'm gonna open up my libraries by pressing Command or Control Shift L. I, I brought a few things in into my library for the start of this project, like a photo of somebody texting, okay? So, um, and if you're asking, where did you get this photo? I just went out to Adobe Stock. I found like a nice photo that I, I thought might work for this project. And I put it inside of my libraries, inside of my Adobe CC libraries here, created something for my chat application, and there it is. If you're looking for some more resources, also, where did I get this typography? Um, I went to Adobe Fonts. I found this great little font pack right down here on the right called the UX font pack. So I decided to use that since we're focusing on UX today. Let's go back over to our stuff here. How's everyone doing in the chat? So far, so good. All right, looks good. The color choices reminds me of the colors of the Hinge dating app. I don't know that dating app, but I do like this color palette quite a bit. All right, we're zooming in. Let's pop this thing here. Maybe we'll just expand that a little bit and let's bring our card up and make sure by pressing Command or Control bracket, I'm just bringing my layer of my card up and above. So now we have something going on right there. Let's bring our text in. And what do we call our app? Votes for the name of, well, maybe we don't put the name in there yet. Let's just say chat like a pro. We'll just put a little bit of generic marketing speak inside of here, no problem. Something like that. And we can just put uh, using the chat app, I don't know, let's put something weird like a plus or something. Chat app plus, you can chat with friends like a pro and the uh, auto correct or the spell check is saving my life at per usual like it always does let's drag this down just a little bit and we're going to get to our consistency piece right now right here okay so first thing we can do is let's hit uh, e for lips and we'll drop in some pagination bubbles down at the very bottom of this thing okay and just space those evenly i'm going to group them together and hit my center alignment tool just like that, all right? So hey, Diego's in the house, we got Vadim in the house, Jennifer Poole's in the house, pretty cool, lots of fun stuff happening. So we got our marketing speak right here, let's do a little bit of typography work, we got bold and we got regular on this uh, Acumen Pro that we're working with. So that's pretty good, but let's make this a little bit bigger and I'm just freestyling the text as we go. Let's do a button now, all right, shall we? Let's bring, maybe not, that, let's do, now here's here's a fun thing we can do. Actually, let's bring our yellow in. Yellow is coming in, turn it into a button. We're establishing a little bit of a call to action here. Why don't we put that right down here and we'll take some text and put it on top like that. And let's put sign up. Uh, or how about just get started? Let's do get started inside, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so we can see what we're doing here on our button. I'm going to center align my text and just bring this a little bit more into the center. I want to make sure this is bold and let's, yeah, let's just bump the text up to like 28 inside of our button. That's a little bit big, isn't it? Woo! Sometimes it can be just a little bit obnoxious. We don't want that. All right. So 
here's our button. And we're gonna be using something called component states today inside of Adobe XD uh, to help with our consistent nature. So with that being said, let's group this whole thing together. And I'm gonna call this button in my layers panel. Okay, so far so good. And again, like we can group this typography together, pull it down a little bit lower, just something like that. Okay, and get started on there. That's fine with me. Let's take these two pagination dots and bring the opacity down. Now we know what screen we're on. So again, here comes consistency, right? Let's take this button and press Command or Control K and make a component. Now we have a button component. We can drag that out and we can have consistent buttons through our onboarding screen. So, you know, we don't have to do this whole thing, but we could come in here. Let's select a new photo, shall we? I'm gonna go down to Photo Splash. I'm gonna put text in here and let's see if we can get something that pops up. Maybe, no, how about uh, phone? That's not how you spell phone. Let's spell phone correctly inside of our just looking for some phone images. There are some phone images, okay? Let's use that one, we'll apply it, and it's gonna pop itself in there using our plugin. Now, we are creating a sense of consistency, right? Okay, so we're gonna zoom into our pagination. Let's just fix this up really quick. Boop, and grab this guy. Ooh, we messed that up. And let's go back to our layers and make sure we're grabbing the right one. Here we go. Now we're active there, okay? Stay in touch, okay? Now again, onboarding screens are a great example of consistency, right? We're moving a few things around, but for the most part, we have a consistent look and feel, visual consistency in our onboarding screen. Okay, from here, let's skip the third one and let's just do get started. That'll take us straight to our chat screen, shall we? Uh, let's move over and do a chat screen. Now, I'm gonna get rid of our image because we no longer need that, but, why don't we keep some consistency here by creating another triangle here, or excuse me, rectangle. Drag that to the top. Make sure that it's behind. We're gonna keep this the blue and our card below is gonna be white. See how already we're creating a little bit of that consistency, okay? Maybe this is a place where our user could set up uh, their account profile. So let's just hit E for ellipse. And come in here just like that, all right? Uh, we got maybe like, couple of minutes left, we're, we're, we're doing all right on time, I think. Let's go into our plugins, because I'm notorious for going over and I'm not doing that anymore. I, did, I said that twice in a row last week until I finally fixed myself and made sure that I would not go over. So now we're, we're doing all right. Um, let's see, we got some consistency is the name of the game, Richard Otley says, that is so true, all right? So we got uh, our, our avatar going in there, and we're gonna just start creating a little bit of our interface. Now, we have, let's, let's talk about component states really quick, an amazing feature that's gonna help us. We have a button and it is yellow. That's a good thing, all right? Um, maybe we don't need that yellow button. Maybe we need at times that button to be blue. So we are here on default state, right? We can always come over and we have our original, you see what happened there? I, I was on like an instance of our button and you can tell it's the instance because in the top right hand corner, you're gonna get that little white, you're gonna get the white diamond there. And when I tap over on the master symbol, you're gonna get the filled diamond. Let me just zoom in so you can see that little filled diamond right there, okay? So this is the master. So when I clicked on it, up here in my inspector panel, I get a little pencil. I click on that, it takes me to the master. Now I'm on the master, let's add a new state to this button, okay? So we're gonna hit new state. We could just create a hover state if we want, but let's call this blue. All right, so we have a blue version of our button. We're gonna take the fill and let's make it like a light blue, okay? Now, when we did that, we, we affected the entire button. So we're gonna wanna make sure we go into our stuff here. We have our new, uh, our new state selected. We're gonna wanna make sure that we do, the button is blue, but the text is white, obviously, okay? We have light blue button. Now we can come over here and we can choose which button we want, right? And the text inside is always updatable, it's changeable, okay? So we can say uh, confirm or something like that. Or how about uh, save profile, something like this, okay? Um, and again, we don't wanna spend too much time working on this because we wanna get to some other stuff, but let's do just a little bit of, a little bit of work inside of here. So I'm gonna put 
like some text underneath that says like the name, like uh, how about my name? That's not me, but you get it. We're gonna pop that inside. Let's take down the opacity. Let's just play a little bit and have some fun. Make sure it, it doesn't have to be so bold, right? So crazy. Let's bring this down. And then up here, what we can do is bring this avatar down. And instead of having an image in there, why don't we just fill it? We'd put some icons in here maybe. Yeah, like maybe some icons could go in there. Some things we can set up that could look pretty nice. Um, okay, let's do our chat app and see in about five minutes if we can make some progress there. So let's go over to our chat app and let's see what changes we can make here. I'm gonna get rid of, mm, let me see, the blue that's here and I'm gonna take my white I'm kind of like card thing. I'm gonna spin it around, take it all the way up to the top and then I think what I'll do is, oh, you know what? I should have kept the blue. Let's bring this down here and take it to the back. So I want to point out some visual consistency stuff that I'm doing, okay? Uh, let's get rid of this. We don't need our pagination on either of these screens. And I don't think I need this and this. But why don't we mimic our icons that were up there? with our avatar. So now we're into like a chat mode and our avatar is right there. And I'm gonna pull um, like a little bit of help. Like I need, I need some help here. So I went and downloaded an, a, a UI element template and I did that by going to, where did I go? I went to Adobe and I looked up uh, like a, a kit, like a UI kit. So you could download one there. You can go to Apple Design Resources. You can download one there as well. And when I downloaded it, I got all the different things. Look at all these amazing things just for Adobe XD that you can use so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to reinvent the keyboard right now. So I'm just going to drag this version over. I'm going to add a keyboard into my design just like that. That's looking pretty good. Uh, hey, Julia Clayton, my homie Julia Clayton is in the house. All right, we got like four more minutes, three more minutes, Julia, and we are cranking away. Let's do some more consistency stuff here. Let's do, I'm gonna do a rectangle. Okay, I'm gonna just do a little chat bubble right here. Okay, let's grab our color. That's chat bubble right there. And let's do a chat bubble over here. Before we do that, let's come in and let's use our pen tool to make a little a little chat bubble thing on the side. Uh, you know what we should do? I got a, I got an idea. Let's take the corner of this and just bring it out like that. That's fun. Now we don't even have to do uh, like a little chat bubble like corner thing. Okay, 15 pixels uh, of padding on the left hand side. And then we can take some text. Let's just copy our text and bring it in like this. And we'll move it up. Okay, and we'll bring the size of the text down to like a 14 and capture it inside. Let's change the line height so we can fit more stuff in it, just like that. And if we want this chat bubble's a little, it's a little thin, so why don't we give it a little bit of spacing and just drag it out like that. There we go, that looks kind of like a chat bubble, doesn't it? I don't know, I think so, it could. We're gonna capture the whole thing together. We're gonna group it. Why don't we say Command K? Uh, we'll make a component out of it and why don't we give it a new state? Let's do a new state. We'll call this right. Okay, what does that mean? What do you mean right? Well, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip it to the right. Okay, now I have multiple states. I have the left and the right. And the right one should not be that color. It should be the dark blue. So now we have light blue and dark blue and we're using the same component. Hello, and we, we're bringing consistency into this bad boy, right? So now I can just drag these around, give me my 15 pixels of padding, and I can change this to right, okay? See how consistent we're being? And now we're also being consistent with our spacing. We're just gonna get same vertical spacing. Oh, that looks so good. I like what we're doing. Let's just drag this a little further down, okay? Just like that. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's delete this running out of time, but you guys are getting the point, right? Aren't you with our consistency? And let's do one thing here. Let's, before we get going, I'm gonna drag that out. I'm gonna create a new chat input bar. Okay, so let's fill this maybe with like a light gray. Now we're looking like we have a chat. Obviously up here in the corner, we'd wanna have like an icon that's like to go back, right? We definitely would want something like that. We don't have time to go find icons. So we're just gonna put some kind of placeholder elements over here. Okay, chat's looking pretty good. And then why don't we take one of these actually, paste it inside 
and let's do like a send button inside of here, right? Definitely want a send button right inside of your chat UI. But now we can just keep prototyping, we can keep having fun, and we don't have to worry because there's a lot of consistency that happens. Let's point out the consistency that we have created so far. Color consistency, shape consistency, call to action button consistency, right? Card or, uh, or common patterns or user interface patterns consistency by using our card type. We, we use component states to create chat bubbles that we just flip, flop, flip, flop. And so we never have any differentiation of what our chat bubbles look like. If we want to get crazy with this, really crazy, then if you want to put this in your homework, you could take things like these chat bubbles or these buttons and you can turn on your layout settings, your padding and your responsive sizing so that as the chat bubble grows and the text inside grows, so grows the bubble. And that's pretty much all we have time for today. Thank you everybody for joining us. Let's jump out to our main screen. Uh, cannot wait to see your submissions. That's pretty much it for challenge number five for the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. We're gonna be right back here tomorrow at the same time, working on some more UX Crash Course stuff. Again, I'm your host, Jesse Showalter. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned, lots of fun stuff on Adobe Live on Behance today. So stick around, grab a cup of coffee, use the bathroom. We'll be right back.